Welcome to the World Med School. My name is Elena Stilianou and I'm a postdoctoral research scientist at the Jenner Institute of the University of Oxford. In this short presentation, I will be talking to you about the pathophysiology of TB. In the latest report by the World Health Organization, it was estimated that there were 9 million new cases of TB and 1.5 million deaths in 2013. 3.5% of new cases were infections with multidrug resistant strains, and of those cases, 9% were infections with extensively drug resistant strains. As you can see in the figure on the left, the highest number of incidence cases in 2013 were in India and China. And when we look at the incidence rates on the right figure, that is the number of TB cases per 100,000 people, the highest were in Africa with Lesotho, South Africa and Swaziland having one person every hundred developing active TB. Tuberculosis is caused by the bacterium Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Transmission occurs via the air when an actively infected person coughs or sneezes. The disease will most commonly affect the lungs, causing pulmonary TB. However, the bacterium can also cause extra pulmonary TB by traveling to sites other than the lung. MTB is diagnosed by microscopy in the sputum of active TB patients. TB itself can be divided into three categories. Drug-susceptible TB, which is curable by the mainline drugs rifampicin and isoniazid, and treatment lasts about six months. Multidrug resistant strains are resistance to these first-line drugs. Treatment of these strains is with less effective and more toxic alternatives and lasts for much longer. Lastly, extensively drug-resistant strains exist, treatment of which is even more difficult. BCG is currently the only available vaccine against TB, and although effective against childhood forms of TB, it is not effective against adult pulmonary TB, which is the cause of TB burden worldwide in most TB high-burden countries. So what happens after inhalation of tuberculosis bacilli? Primary infection can lead to progress towards active disease, containment as latent in disease, or eradication by the host's immune system. The risk of developing active TB is 5 to 10% over a lifetime, but the risk is 10% every year for people who are co-infected with HIV. People that eradicate their primary infection have a negative TST and IGRA test. TST is a tuberculin skin test whereby purified protein derivative, PPD, is injected into the forearm intradermally. People who have been exposed to the bacteria are expected to mount an immune response to the site of infection. IGRA, or interferon gamma release assays, is a blood test that detects the release of interferon gamma when cells from infected individuals get stimulated with antigens derived from TB. People with latent and active TB have a positive TST and IGRA test. Latently infected individuals have a normal chest radiograph, have no symptoms and are not infectious. However, people with active TB will normally have an abnormal chest radiograph, will have symptoms such as weight loss, fever and cough, and might be infectious. What is the life cycle of TB and how does it cause disease? MTB can be transmitted when an individual with active pulmonary TB coughs or sneezes, releasing droplet nuclei full of TB. These droplets can remain airborne for several hours, depending on the environment. Transmission occurs when a person inhales these droplets and the TB bacilli reach the alveoli. MTB is phagocytosed by alveolar macrophages and the bacteria divide within the macrophages by invading hosts' innate mechanisms. The macrophages release pro-inflammatory cytokines, which leads to the recruitment of mononuclear cells from nearby blood vessels. These cells release more pro-inflammatory cytokines. Uninfected macrophages arriving at the infection site phagocytose dying infected macrophages, increasing the number of infected cells. These initial steps form the early granuloma, which consists of an amorphous mass of cells. During this period, there is little restriction to mycobacterial growth, and the bacteria grow exponentially. TB also infects dendritic cells, which will migrate to the draining lymph nodes to induce an adaptive response. Antigen-specific cells arrive at the granuloma, and this initiates the containment phase of infection. T-cells secrete cytokines, activating macrophages to kill mycobacteria. 
the macrophages themselves differentiate into epithelioid, multinucleated giant cells, and foaming macrophages, which are full of lipid. Most of individuals control TB at this stage, that is, they are latently infected and therefore not infectious. However, with granulomas associated with disease progression, the outside fibrous sheath becomes more prominent, the blood vessels penetrating the granuloma decrease, and there is an evident increase of foaming macrophages. The central part becomes more necrotic, more necrotic and caseous, and ultimately the granuloma ruptures, releasing thousands of bacilli in the airways. Does the granuloma contribute to protection or pathology? The granuloma is a balance between host containment and disease progression. On one hand, the host induces a robust immune response by deploying a large number of cells, including macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, T cells. However, on the other hand, the bacterium has developed mechanisms to withstand difficult conditions in the granuloma. For example, low oxygen and lack of nutrients. Anything that affects the balance between MTB and the host immune response will result in either disease progression or improved containment. For example, HIV and any treatments that result in immune suppression tilt the balance towards the, fam the favor of the bacterium. On the other hand, vaccination and chemotherapy toward the host. Although pulmonary TB occurs in the majority of cases, the bacteria can gain access to the lymphatic system and circulating blood, and they travel to other sites causing disease. Some of the most common forms of TB include lymph node TB, the most common form of extrapulmonary TB. It can affect any lymph node, but the most common is in the neck. Another common site of infection is the pleura, the double membrane separating the lungs from the chest cavity. Bacteria grow there, resulting in inflammation and symptoms include fever and chest pain. TB can infect bones and joints and also the central nervous system. When MTB infects the membrane surrounding the brain, it causes TB meningitis. This is very serious and very difficult to treat. TB can infect many other organs, including liver and kidney. Transmission of TB is a very efficient process, as currently one-third of the world's population is infected with TB, yet only 10% of those will develop disease at some point in their life. MTB has developed mechanisms to survive within the harsh conditions of the granuloma. Ongoing research is trying to identify mechanisms used by the bacterium to resist the host immune response. This will allow the development of better vaccines and drugs that will control TB infection. Thank you for studying with World Med School.